Okay, I got the top part of the compound slide finished. Um, ever since with intolerance and I scraped for bearing and now I'm working on the lower part, which has a which has dovetail obviously. This side is on an angle because it will uh, house the the tapered gib and this side is parallel to the outside. Um, obviously this is worn too. Um, not so much on the on the side. Ooh, this is terrible with the shadow. Um, it's not worn, uh, really worn on the side where the gib rests on because this is the static side of the gib which does not move only for adjusting but this side is heavily worn it's really bad <laughs> um, there is again this wear ridge um, of unworn area that is probably two or three hundredths of a millimeter high um, I could try to get an indicator in there and measure the height but Just by feeling in there with a pointy object, it feels like a few hundredths of a millimeter. Uh, which will clean up very fast because I will just shave away um, this ridge with the carbonate scraper by hand. Um, you just set it like this and you move along the edge. And then you can cleanly cut it off. One or two passes will get rid of it. Um, then we will uh, scrape match fit this side of the dovetail with uh, the, the sliding surface here against the top side of the uh, top slide, uh, against the dovetail of the top slide. So this is already done. These are ground and I just scraped the pattern on them to get them uh, not 100% bearing. Now they are like 50% bearing surface. And later we will relieve about one third of the center here will get relieved maybe five thousandths of a millimeter deep. Because when the slide wears it will wear on the ends first. So um, it's concave in the beginning then it will wear on the ends then it will be flat and then it will get uh, convex. So before it, uh, th th this is, this prolongs the life or the time between refurbishment of machine parts uh, quite a bit because um, it will wear better before it gets worse. It's, uh, that's a, a very interesting and also important concept um, we could just leave it flat, but it will wear. It will out out of my shop. It will start to wear on the end and get worse. But if we have the pie, there's some time until it gets flat, and then it will start to get worse. So yeah, <laughs> just repeated myself there. Um, so now we will work on the surface here, and again. Uh, the, the wooden clamp. I really like the wooden clamps. You can get a good hold of everything and you do not mar anything with them. Okay, um, this side of the tops of the, of the underside of the compound is now scraped. Nice bearing, nice fit to the, to the side. And now it's a matter of matching this side with the tapered gib and the tapered gib to this part. So uh, we have three parts that have to match up and be <laughs> relatively precise in the end. So that's a bit of a, a challenge. Uh, this, is, this is the replacement gib that's uh, supplied from uh, Shoveling. And that's the original uh, gib. As you can see, um, the, the, origin, the, the replacement one is slightly thicker than the uh, original one. The original one is worn down so far that it goes out the other end. And I almost think that somebody just snapped off the end because it was sticking out so far. <laughs> and it has really heavy wear here. Um, um, 
Yeah, so now we have to, to match the skip. Um, we'll get parts together. Gip goes on well, obviously on this side because here is the adjustment screw or the adjustment screw will go in there. Um, the slot for the adjustment screw is already cut into the gip, but it's super, super, super tight. Um, we have to open this up very carefully with by filing until this goes in perfectly. Not just good, perfect. And the gip the way around. You can tell which way uh, by looking at the adjustment screw slot down here. And yeah, we'll, we'll put some a little bit of oil on it, not to drive it in dry. And as you can see, end of, end, end of story. Um, goes in this far and no more. Uh, we could hammer it in a little bit more but that doesn't make any sense, and we would run into the danger of breaking it, uh, breaking the other parts, because the taper has a uh, gi gi gigantic uh, mechanical advantage. And, <laughs> yeah, it's stuck. Okay, what are we going to do? The give is parallel. Um, from here to here it's parallel and in this direction it's tapered. That means that this angle uh, down here has to match this angle because uh, the gib is parallel. And we can check that by using uh, this has master. We blew this up, and we will uh, we'll put some blue on here, and we will uh, rub the mating surf this surface here, which in reality will never slide against each other. But we will just do this as a matchup to see if it fits. So I'm applying the blue, and I just wipe it down very lightly to keep uh, to get a nice uh, blue on there and now I've got the slide in there I will push it that way and it will rub it Let the slide out don't drop it and look at the horror show. I hope you can see the the bearing pattern in there. We are we're hitting very hard on this upper side and not basically not down here. So I'm going to scrape this uh, this upper third of this static bearing surface little bit down and I hope that with one or two passes we will get uh, the angles to match. Okay, I scraped the angle of the surface to match uh, to match the side of the dovetail. Uh, took only two or three passes. The angle was not really much off. And now it's a matter. Basically the last step is to take the gib and make it fit. Um, I I marked I marked the position how far it went in before I matched the angle and now it already goes in farther, which is good um, because it needs to go in that much more. Um, we do not want to go uh, have it go in too far because we need. Uh, adjustment over time if the slide wears in or gets uh, re-scraped in 10 years again then uh, the owner has not to buy another new gib or we or the gib has not to be thickened up with some turkite or filo gauge stock on the back side um, 
but has enough room to do adjustment and account for, for the material we take off while scraping. So, um, the hard thing with Gibbs is um, they are thin um, and they bend very easily. So, I will hold them on a magnetic chuck to do the scraping, which is uh, basically the, the easiest way to have them uh, fully supported and held rigidly. We're going to scrape one side just with uh, with the with the straight edge flat because um, we could either blew it up on the surface plate or use the straight edge. Either one works with the by bluing it on the surface plate you have to be careful to to put even pressure on it like this uh, again about a third from the ends in press down and rub it. To get to get a, a realistic bluing, or we can take the straight edge and blue it that way. So I bought this ultra cheap uh, magnetic chuck, uh, Chinese magnetic chuck from eBay. Cost me seventy euros shipped. Uh, <laughs> it cost seventy something bucks free shipping, and it's hundred fifty by hundred fifty millimeters. And while it looks like a fine pole, in mm. reality. It's not very fine pole. Uh, it's a normal, normal pole to chuck with <laughs> a kind of weird arrangement. But it has an incredible strong holding power, and I uh, bought it for the milling machine uh, because my surface grinder has obviously a magnet. My lathe has a magnet chuck. And I want the mill and the shaper to have a magnet too, to swap it in. So, and it's also nice because it holds parts for scraping. And it's, as you can see, it holds them very well. Um, you have to really put a lot of force into it. And I guess I can even power scrape this. So this works quite well on the magnet. I have to back the, the gib up with a parallel, otherwise it, it tended to slip, which is not a problem because you just put a parallel behind it and lock it. And then you can scrape away. And it's really a slick way of holding the part for scraping. Uh, obviously, this magnetizes uh, the part, but I have a brand new used uh, demagnetizer. Okay, I decided that this is stupid. Um, the, I have about five tenths of a millimeter to remove, and by scraping, that will take probably until the end of the year. So um, I put my angle table on the mill, I, I clamp the magnet to it and I have the gib set up on top of the magnet and I'm indicating one surface of the, of the tapered gib in uh, by tilting the table. And I got it pretty darn close. doesn't need to be perfect because uh, after milling we will uh, we will scrape it anyway, but I want to get it uh, pretty darn close. And my mill mills are relatively straight, so I do not worry about that. I'm um, going to use a small 6mm end mill to put not too much force into it, um, and it'll take light cuts. Um, <laughs> no need to take chances on a part like this, where you have only one shot. Okay, I slightly chickened out and I put some blocking around the gib. Um, I really don't want to take any chances. <laughs> uh, would be ridiculous to uh, to mess this up because I was lazy and I was thinking that I do not need any blocking. So let's do this properly. Um, gib is secured in place. Sounds good. Uh, magnet is on, the, the angle table is locked, 
An angle table is locked to the table. Okay, this works brilliant. Uh, that was a depth of cut of uh, five hundredths of a millimeter. Just to get an idea how it behaves. Okay, I milled the gear down uh, by about four, five tenths of a millimeter, and now it obviously slides in way farther. A little bit to go, but. Um, now it's time to adjust the angle. Um, <laughs> and while we're on the milling machine, we can do that uh, by changing the setting of the angle table. So to check the taper fit of the gear, you put it in and you do not uh, hammer it down and lock it in place. You just get it in. And then you take a, a dial indicator dial test indicator with a base and you set it on one part and let it measure against the other part of your slide combination, whatever you're measuring. Um, preferable on the extreme ends, as far out as possible to get, a uh, uh, to get a reading that you can actually use. And you you try to move the slide against itself. You hold the bottom part down and you move the upper part side to side. I do not get any side to side movement here, so this side is hitting, the taper is hitting. Now we move the indicator over, bring it in contact again, and we try to move and there we go, that's side to side play. That means that the taper is too steep, like this. It's hitting on this end and this end of the taper is, is unsupported. That means that we have to bring the angle table on the mill a little bit up. Um, that's about four hundredths of a millimeter over here. And zero over here, over the whole length of the yip. So that's what we're going to set. And that's the same way we measure it later when we scrape the yip. It's uh, <laughs> not really complicated. Okay, I adjusted the angle of the yip two more times, uh, just sneaking up. And uh, it's an, uh, a light fit now. And out here, I have no side to side play if you look at the indicator. No side to side play. And when I move the indicator down here, ooh, and I lock it in place and I adjust it to zero, and I try to move the slide side to side, I get. Ooh, uh, half a division of movement, which is uh, five thousandths of a millimeter roughly. And that's pretty darn close for milling, <laughs> I have to say. Um, doing this on the surface grinder would be even nicer. Um, I'm pretty sure you could grind it finished and then just uh, scrape it for bearing. But this is pretty darn good. Especially if you consider that my mill is not a moor chick borer. <laughs> it's all about setup. I, I, that's what I say. It's all about setup and confidence. So um, the gib is fit. It's almost uh, as far as in as I want it to be. Um, it will move a little bit more when I do the finish scraping because I have to scrape both sides still. And when I take off in total 500 of a millimeter, it will move in about uh, that far. 
So yeah, that's fitting the gear with the milling machine. You saw that the gear already fits very good into the slide, but all the surfaces are now only machined. Um, one side was milled and the other side has a relatively rough grind, uh, factory grind from Schauble. So I put it back on the magnet chuck. Magnet chuck is on bench here. And I blew it up using the straight edge. And you can see that I filmed this over t over a few days because the handles I ordered came in. So now I can take a good hold at it and put pressure where needed uh, with my thumb. Like this, I, I set it down, put it in place, and I can rub it. It helps if you if you turn the magnet off a little bit because um, it sticks, <laughs> uh, which which uh, sucks. Uh, and I just messed up my my bluing here, so I'm going to wipe it, turn the magnet off uh, halfway, just clamping on residual magnetism, re-blue my straight edge, uh, very lightly wipe the straight edge, that's when you get your smurf fingers, and and rub it. And as it seems we had some alcohol left, that means we messed up again. <laughs> and we have to do this again. And yeah, this bench is a little bit shaky. In fact, this is my tool cart. But here you can see that we get a pretty good bearing. This is a, a good static bearing. Uh, no need to do anything else to the surface. Okay, I got the gib fitted and I have the... Okay, I have the gib fitted, scraped it nice and flat, both sides, match fitted it to the two slides and got the, the lead screw back in temporarily. Uh, didn't bother with the dial right now. And as you can see, um, I set the gib fairly snug, uh, like I would set it. I like my gibs on the machines fairly tight, so I do not get any unwanted side-to-side -side movement. And as you can see, I can crank it without a problem, end-to-end. -end. <laughs> Which was before absolutely impossible, because it was binding up like crazy. And this feels really nice. Um, in reality, Maybe I would set the gib a little bit looser uh, to give the whey oil a <laughs> By the way, whey oil, not whale oil. Whey oil, like the lube you put on a whey of a machine, not uh, putting a whale in a blender. Uh, some really some people in the last video were really concerned <laughs> that I use whale oil. I do not. Not right now, at least. So, I'm also checking the side-to-side -side play of the compound in itself. Uh, top part of the compound against the fixed part of the compound using the indicator. This reads one hundredths of a millimeter, which is uh, roughly five tenth. And I zeroed it out, nice as I am. Uh, normally I wouldn't bother because we're just measuring relatively. And as you can see, I just clamped it down to the mill table because that's very convenient. Um, and I do not have any free space in the shop right now. It's a <laughs> uh, behind me. It's a train wreck. So, and now I'm now just trying to move the slide side to side, and as you can see, the indicator uh, is not broken. It's actually reading, but <laughs> uh, it's it's reading nothing. Um, over here, so 
same thing. Now, uh, this is basically checking the gear, the taper of the gear, if it's uh, bearing on both ends and the taper is matched to the taper of the slide itself. And out here, we do not get any side to side movement, too. So that's pretty darn good. I like this. <laughs> um, I'm very happy. First time I fitted a gib, actually. Um, a brand new gib. I scraped gibs before. Um, I did the gibs on this milling machine because the scraping on them was a bit painful. And I learned quite a bit doing that. And now fitting a complete new gib, milling them very closely, worked all quite nice. And I'm really happy how the slide came out. Came out. Um, it's running nice and parallel. It doesn't change height. Uh, when it's traveling uh, along, doesn't uh, go on a curve or anything stupid. Um, yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> so I got all the scraping done. It's measured. It's it's pretty darn good. Um, I'm reassembling it, and I realized that I have to check the height of the of the nut in here because we changed the heights of the sliding surfaces and. Uh, we might have to sh either shim the nut, the surface of the nut with some shim stock or grind it down. So the way I'm going to measure this is um, I have the lower part sliding here. I set my indicator up to touch the other part of the slide. So, and then I just slide it over the nut. And I was looking for lift. If this part, if this part gets lifted by the nut, I know that I have to grind off some material. That's not the case. As you can see, um, it's at 40, and when I slide it over, it goes over very freely. Um, now we can try to to tilt the nut side to side, left to right, rotate it around the spindle and check for play and this feels pretty good and one last thing we can do is this is a one hundredth of a millimeter shim stock plastic shim and we can slide it between the mounting surface and the nut and now we get roughly one hundredth of a millimeter lift here and we shear the shim stock obviously um, but this shows that, that the contact between the nut and the slide is almost perfect. Um, less deviation than one hundredth of a millimeter. Um, if there was more space I could use, for example, feeler gauges to, to, to figure out how much uh, material to put on the surface. As you can see, the one hundredths of a millimeter shim stock is stuck in there. It's good and tight. So obviously, we do not have to do anything to the uh, to the mounting surface of the nut. I clean, I cleaned it, and I stunned the burrs because around the threads, as usual, um, the threads pulled up and created a burr which messes with the mounting. So now we can put the the gib in, put some oil on it, both surfaces, sliding and static surface of the gib, put it in. Hey, don't put it in without the screw. Drop it in the slot and get it in there. feels good to me. This is not the final adjustment of the side-to-side -side play. This is only for now. Now we can get the nut in position. Uh, 
There we go. Final adjustment will be done by the by the owner of the slide anyway. Um, I'm just going to set it in a way that I I'm comfortable to ship it. Um, of course, I lubricated everything before I put it together. I do not want any uh, dry movement right now on this thing. Um, you never want. Uh, not even during assembly. <clears throat> Chances of galling and scratching and whatnot are pretty high. I got it all back together. I lubricated, I adjusted the gib. Um, this thing is, is done. I'm very happy how it came out. Um, full travel, very low, si very even and minimal side to side play. It was in relatively good shape apart from the gibbs. Um, the top surface is pretty flat. This uh, rotating flange that mounts on the cross slide is pretty good, but the ways and the gib were worn pretty bad. If I look at the gib right now, <laughs> this is really this is really evil, um, really bad wear. So uh, we got this back in working order to a very high standard in my mind. Um, I'm not ashamed of the work I did to it, and we're ready to send it out. Um, um, I know I, I went over some points in this rebuild uh, relatively fast, but it's always a, a struggle between working relatively fast and getting this thing out of the shop and filming as much as possible and showing and explaining some things. So it's a bit of a, a problem from time to time. But I still hope that I could show one or two interesting points of a complete rebuild of a slide. So... Thank you for watching and see you next time.